Owen Hargreaves joins us on TalkSport. How are you? I'm good, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I think we're going to pick up maybe with just what we were talking about with Rio. You know, it was a slightly insulting question. I hate to say it, Rory Jennings, but, you know, asking a question claiming that Bayern, Bayern Munich is possibly underwhelming. I think going to the Bundesliga is potentially underwhelming for the England captain. I don't necessarily think that's snide or sneery. Is that too harsh, Owen? Um, you're asking the wrong guy. You know, I did 10 years at Bayern Munich. You, you know, you won't find a better club than you have at Bayern Munich. With the utmost respect to all the other teams. I mean, if you go, and I'm guessing that's probably what sealed the deal for Harry. If you go there, you won't leave there. You ask Frank Ribery, you ask Ari and Robin, you ask... And the only reason Robert Lewandowski left is because he wanted a different challenge. And that's the only reason I left there. I was there for 10 years from 16 to 26. That club is elite on every level. Training grounds, stadiums, quality of life in the city, which is probably big for Harry and his family. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, the reason I left is because it wasn't competitive enough for me. Really? What, yeah. the, league, the Bundesliga generally? Well, no, I, I, you know, in a way, without being... Uh, we were favourites, yeah. and we were lifting the trophy, yeah. and I, I didn't enjoy, I didn't celebrate winning a trophy as much as I probably felt like I should. Yeah, but I think that's that's kind of tapping into what I meant, like well, winning ish, but still. But hold on, hold on. If you win the league every year, that's different. Yeah, Harry Kane goes there to win the 12th, 12th in a row is slightly underwhelming. No, no. But the point is, Harry's 29 now, and Harry probably wants to win some trophies because and he deserves that right. The, the thing is, Bayern is not about Bayern is not about winning the Bundesliga and winning the cup. That's expected. That's if you don't do that, you got a big big problem Bayern is about winning the Champions League and that's and, and that's the holy grail look look what PSG's invested in, in trying to you know make that happen yeah. and nothing's come to fruition there's no guarantee but Bayern's goal is to be the best of the best and I I would you know to go there and see that football club training ground stadium fan base whatever they, he gives himself a puncher's chance to be in the mix and I think in that sense I can understand if he does it why he would do it but also you got you know you got Real Madrid's and you got you know I can understand why he would want to go there's options but in the end this is a personal choice all the boys make a feeling choice and for whatever reason it must have must have grabbed him the same way you know when you meet people bosses or whatever you know girlfriends future wives whatever it's a gut thing yeah and i'm guessing he's going with his gut how do you think he's feeling now you've been there as a player you know big moves on the horizon not quite there the agent calls it turns out that Daniel Levy is in negotiations with, with Bayern Munich, but you're hearing that they're apart on price, for example. This is something that's happened to Harry Kane before, of course, when it came to a possible move to Manchester City. And he's had to watch Erling Haaland win a treble and score, what, 36 Premier League goals on the way. Will he be feeling now a sense of huge frustration if he doesn't end up going to Bayern Munich, what can we expect from him over the next 12 months, even if he goes on a free in a year? No, I don't think so. I mean, in the end, these guys are elite. Why, why would you worry about something you've got no control over? You know, in a way, he could have, he could have done what Harlan did. But, you know, might have scored the same, might have scored more. Why worry about something you've got no control over? It's a, it's a complete waste of energy. Harry Kane is... Is Harry Kane. He's elite. He's probably the only striker in the world that's an elite number nine and an elite number ten. So I'm sure Harry, you know, you think about it sometimes, you'll be laying in bed and you'll be thinking, like, what could I? But it's a waste of energy. And what makes the great ones great is they don't waste energy. You know, they live in the moment and they get the job done. In terms of the new Premier League season, it's really starting to hard now. Manchester City are embarking on, uh, on a journey to try and win four in a row. Four in a row has never been done here. Do you see it going that way? I don't see it. I don't see why not. I mean, you know, Pep's the greatest innovative coach I think we've ever seen on, you know, in, almost in any sport, you know, to think the reason they won the Champions League was probably one of the reasons maybe it was probably their downfall before was the fact that they were a little bit open. They played this beautiful football. Every time they got knocked out, they were the better team. Yeah. You know, whether it was Monaco, whether it was, whether it was Tottenham, you know, whether it was Real Madrid, every time they were a better team, but they lost in football at that level is one moment. That's it. Yeah. And I think Pep found a way to minimize those moments last season by playing a back four, getting rid of the fullbacks, playing four center backs, and thought, right, if I keep a clean sheet, I know we're going to score. And what happened? Yeah. And I think Pep is the greatest at finding solutions, in-game solutions, being creative. 
and I can you can almost guarantee you he'll have a you know he'll have a surprise for this season. Is there a slight weakness do you think in their team? You know how a lot of players have left, and uh, as things stand, they're on the cusp of signing Guardiola. But as things stand, only Mateo Kovacic has arrived, and they've lost players like Gundogan, Mares. Can you see a slight chink in the armour? <laughs> no, me, me neither. <laughs> no, no, no. no. You, you, you're right, Roy, you're right. I mean, um, Gundogan and Mahrez in big moments, you know, big moments, experienced players with big goals in, in key moments. And that's all football is at the elite level, is the moment. You know, can you grab the moment? Those guys did that. So I, I think you're right. It's, it, but as it stands, they're probably a little bit worse than they were last year. But maybe that means Phil Foden gets more opportunities. Maybe that means Phil Foden plays more central. Maybe that means, you know, somebody else steps in. So Vardio will, will be the best centre back in the world one day. So to add him to the mix to what you already got, you know, I think I think Pep will find a way, and I think the lad probably one or two more big hitters to kind of, you know, to improve them. Who do you see as Manchester City's main competitors in the Premier League this season? I think the top four is pretty set in a way. Um, I think it's Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City. Um, God knows what order because there's so many good teams. I think outside of that, you know, I think Chelsea, I, I think it will be a difficult season for them. I think they're relatively young. Newcastle fans might be feeling that's a tad harsh on them. No, no, I love Newcastle. You know, I think they, what they've been able to do and that fan base deserves to be where they are. But I think playing in Champions League and managing all that, and, you know, they'll probably need a few more numbers and a bigger squad. Um, uh, but I think Eddie Howe, they're way ahead of the curve. They're way ahead of where they should be. I think Brighton and Aston Villa are going to be a problem for a few teams. I just think that the attention is detail from those two coaches. Um, I, I was just with them in the you know, the Premier League Summer Series in, you know, across America. Those coaches are unbelievable. Honestly, the, 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 the way they make their teams play. And they've improved. So I think Villa and Brighton will be a problem. But uh, Tottenham, I'm, I'm curious about Tottenham, you know, what they do with, with Ange. And, and, and he plays this beautiful football, which is super open. But um, it's, it used to be a top four, didn't it? And now it's it's probably a top six, maybe maybe a, maybe a couple more in there. Yeah, what about the Champions League? Obviously, the Champions League final this year is at Wembley. Bayern Munich actually won it at Wembley the last time it was there. Manchester City will be hoping to retain it. There's loads going on, isn't there, with the Champions League? How do you see that one going? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're the favourites. I mean, they've been everybody's favourite for what? You, you know, for probably five years since Pep's been there. But we've seen the margins are fine. I think, obviously, City are the best best team in there. And then Real, depending on what happens with Mbappe. Bayern, you know, if they get Harry, you know, with Thomas Tuchel and Neuer and, you know, everything Bayern has, that'll be a problem. Mm. They're probably your three big favourites, but... Do Arsenal, I think we maybe write them off slightly, maybe because of the Premier League. The season they had was brilliant, but they didn't lift the trophy. They're going into the Champions League this season and they will feel like they're playing fantastic football. They will take some stopping in that competition too. Who knows, the draw might go their way. Uh, the Champions League, by the way, live and exclusive on TNT Sports this season. But the one Arsenal player I wanted to highlight, because I think in this transfer window, they will feel that they've strengthened with more to come, is of course Declan Rice, whose area of the pitch you know inside out. What will he add to this Arsenal team and how much better could he make them? Yeah, I, I mean, I love Declan. You know, I, I even like the fact that he picked, picked a team that wasn't champion yet. You know, that tells you all you need to know about him. You know, he wants to turn a team into a champion. And there's a big difference, you know, to go somewhere where it's already established. Um, and I just think, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people are criticising this season, saying, you know, he didn't have enough goals and whatever. But I think... Declan and the team that he played in, he did an amazing job, you know, because they played a little bit deeper. They didn't have as much possession. It was hard for him to get in the box. I think Declan can be whatever you need him to be. Um, and I think he's an amazing addition. Obviously, I think for Arsenal, experience showed last season in big moments. You know, they were a little bit too young. I think they were the youngest team in the league. Um, and, I, and I believe this year they've improved dramatically. Even Kai Havertz. I love, I love Kai. You know, I think he's... I think he's got so much talent. And he, he, he Can he play in the central midfield area? I mean, I don't, we don't know where he's really going to play, but if he is, has been bought to kind of be a classier, more attacking version of the role that Granit Xhaka had played, do you think he can do it? Because the main question mark for me is not that the, the, the boy has talent. He's got remarkable talent. It's that, particularly in that area of the pitch, the aggression and the arrogance, if you like, the ability to stick his chest out, he doesn't quite yet seem to have that in English football. Yeah, but I think his body language is a bit like Mesut Ozil. You know, he's quite a... 
I think he's misunderstood. Um, and I think he's not. Oh, yeah, he can play there, especially in an Arsenal team that has 70% possession. He doesn't have to be nasty. All he has to do is get on the half turn and, you know, get his head up. So, but I think he gives them a huge opportunity to, to rest Saka, to rest Udegaard, to rest Gabba Jesus. He can play in all three of those positions, plus he can play deeper. I think the deeper one's the hardest one for him. Um, but I think his talent is, 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 is undeniable. He's, what is he, 6'2"? He's good in the air. He can do so much. And I think with the, with the issues that Chelsea had, everybody, everybody, you know, the ship sank and everybody went under with it whether that's Kai or Thomas Tuchel or Graham Potter or, or, or uh, Mason Mount. So I don't think you can judge anyone in, in those circumstances. And I think Kai is in for a big year. Well, his role for the first few weeks of the season may be quite clearly defined because news tonight on Talk Sport that Arsenal's Gabriel Jesus has had a procedure on his knee and he will be out for the first few weeks, we're told, of the Premier League season. So maybe we'll see that false nine role that Kai Havertz played at Chelsea Re um, reignited at Arsenal. Yeah, well, to be fair, Chelsea started Leverkusen, where he did it so well. He, uh, Kai initially started kind of off the right, coming inside. Then he was a 10, then he was as a false nine because of injuries. And that's what, I think about that. You know, you can get a young kid that can play four positions at an elite level. You know, and, and I do think being versatile is, is, you know, there's a disadvantage to that. But one thing I would say is that Chelsea, through all that chaos that was going on there, who, th th he was picked every week ahead of everybody else so what does that tell you all the managers believed in his ability his teammates believed in his ability and I agree he could probably be more consistent but he has something and Mikel and Edu I'll be honest I, don't, I haven't seen them miss in the market yet no that's true I think in terms of their recruitment they've got a lot right the, the thing that I would find interesting though is you obviously played that central midfield berth so well there is a robust quality that is necessary to play that role. Yeah. You have to have yeah. an edge to your character. You have to be ready to be maybe a little bit venomous or a little bit spiteful. I never saw... Obviously, I'm a Chelsea He, he doesn't fan. mean to insult you by saying that, by the way. No, no, they're, they're <laughs> all compliments. They're compliments. He's 100% right. Those Football words at the elite level is about competition, end of. Yeah, no, also, all of those words, although they have negative connotations in society, those words on a football pitch are compliments. No, they're, 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 they're elite. Yeah, they're absolutely. Elite, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I just wonder if Kai Havertz has enough of that in him to play a deeper role. To see him play as a false nine at Arsenal, I think it could potentially work. Can you see Arsenal launching a sustained bid for the league again then? Particularly without uh, uh, buying a goal scorer this summer. I think Arsenal will be a problem for everyone. You know, I, I think they'll... They've improved. Timber's a great addition. You know, can play multiple positions, right back, centre back. Declan's Declan. You know, can play deeper, can play higher, whatever you need. Um, and Kai, Kai can play everywhere. So I, I, I think they'll be better. I still think they're a little bit young. We've seen teams. You need experience. You know, you don't just come in and then win. Do you know what I mean? And we saw they fall away in the top four. This year they finished second. I think they'll be better. Whether whether they win or not, I, I don't know. I think b being the youngest team in the league is not always a massive advantage. I think you need a mix of young and old. I'm not sure they have that mix yet. I think Mikel wanted to create what he had and then develop with the young guys. But at some point, you need a few guys that are the ruthless. Arsenal had an amazing season. I was blown away by how good they were. They fell away at the end, and, and I understand why, because you know, I've been in those teams. They needed a little bit more in the moments when it's difficult. Mm. And that you can't quantify. But I think Mikel will learn from that, and that's why Declan is probably was their marquee signing, because Declan didn't Declan has that, Declan understands what it needs in a moment when it's difficult, you know, from, from the way he, that he plays the game.